Something I haven't touched on in a while on this channel is the darker side of the Zelda series. While I love our boy Link, we always kind of know what to expect on his end. But the villains. <laughs> All weirdness aside, every so often Nintendo is kind enough to throw us a bone and change the formula up a bit. From the lame and goofy to the downright bloodthirsty, the Zelda series has seen its fair share of dastardly villains. So let's go ahead and give these baddies the spotlight they deserve and go through my personal top 5 Zelda villains. Now before we start, here's a quick reminder. Just because a villain doesn't appear on this list doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's not on this list. By the way, I've started selling t-shirts and hoodies over on Teespring, so if you want to support the channel, head over to the official store down below. Now, let's get into the list. So I know you might have never expected this dude to appear at the beginning of this video. You know, Chancellor Cole is from one of the Zelda games that people don't necessarily think of when going through the best of the series. However, Spirit Tracks honestly had a load of interesting locations and characters. While the number 5 spot on this list is going to Chancellor Cole, it could have easily have gone to Maladis or even Burn. However, I think the villain from this game who left the most impact on me was Chancellor Cole. He's just honestly one of the most maniacal villains in the game. He starts off as just a worker in the castle, serving Zelda and the king. However, Zelda soon realizes he may not be all that he seems. In fact, that's one of the reasons she attempts to leave the castle to begin with. Almost immediately after, we find out that Cole isn't even a human, when he removes his two hats and shows his two horns. Cole is some kind of demon, following Maladis in an attempt to gain power. But his personality throughout the game is really one of the reasons why I liked him so much. He's evil through and through. Calm, but slightly manic at times. But more importantly, the game also shows him off as a pathetic coward screaming and crying while his lord Maladis attempts to possess him, and even rejecting Maladis' spirit. Cole is really just the perfect stereotypical cowardly villain, and that's why he claims the number 5 spot on this list. Majora is one of the weirdest enemies in the entire series. It's not just some kind of regular boss. Majora is strange, creepy, and all around evil. Or is it? Well, this is one of the most debated points in the community. Despite the messed up stuff Majora does to characters like Anju, Cafe, and of course Skull Kid, it's shown through later portions of the game that it wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility for Majora to simply be a lonely being, looking to find a friend, someone to play with. While summoning the moon to, well, kill everyone may not help in making friends, I think something like that is super obvious. Once Link enters the moon, which to a certain degree is Majora's domain, he sees a number of children donning the masks of the four temple bosses. I honestly like to see the inside of the moon as a physical representation of Majora's mental state. Seeing it this way makes everything in the room make sense. It shows off Majora as a sad, lonely being that simply wants a friend. Now, of course, that's not all there is to the character. I think one of the most interesting parts of this villain is the boss fight itself. Creepy really isn't the only word to describe it properly. A giant mask growing tentacles and limbs running around the room? It's definitely off-putting, and I love it. All these things together work in Majora's favor allowing it to unmask the number 4 spot. Okay, so this is not necessarily the most common pick for a popular Zelda villain, but Varan, the Sorceress of Shadows, is truly one of the best. Often a Zelda villain might trick, deceive, or overpower others to get their way, but one of the most unique ways a villain gets their way is through pure possession. Varan is the villain most known for this. Throughout the span of the Oracle of Ages, Varan manages to possess Impa, Queen Ambi, and even Nehru, the Oracle of Ages herself. I just think as a villain, Varan herself is such an interesting character, despite her role essentially boiling down to fodder Twinrova used to revive Ganon. 
She's the type to use Nehru until she no longer needs her, when she almost immediately moves on to Queen Ambi. It just really makes for a really nice change of pace in a Zelda game, a character who truly acts entirely like a traditional villain, using and discarding those she can control. Not to mention the literal zero chill she has during her boss fights. She turns into a giant demonic fairy and summons four dark links to also attack Link. And in one of my favorite parts of her in the game, when she dies, she doesn't just throw out a curse or scream or anything like that. She simply just tells Link he is too late and laughs. That's why she takes the number three spot on this list. Now it's pretty hard not to include Ganondorf or Ganon on a list of Zelda villains. Some form of the Gerudo King has appeared all throughout the series, from his cunning phase in Ocarina of Time to his sad and wistful phase in Wind Waker, his I swear I'm not Ganon yet phase in Skyward Sword, and his most recent appearance as let's see if you get bored of me if I'm every boss fight styled villain in Breath of the Wild. Unsurprisingly, Ganondorf is probably the most fleshed out character in the entire series. I'd venture to say even more so than Link or Zelda. Ganon has appeared in almost every Zelda game, and this has truly shown us fans what really makes him tick. Skyward Sword showed us Demise's curse, explaining why Ganondorf is even a thing. Ocarina of Time showed us the rise and origins of the Gerudo King, and his hunt for the Triforce. From there, every timeline shows the different paths the Demon King takes. In the Downfall timeline, his Gerudo form all but disappears, replaced by his beast form, Ganon. The Child timeline shows his eventual death and replacement by the time of Four Swords Adventures. The Adult timeline shows the power struggle he and the King of Hyrule go through, and his deep sorrows of the past. And let's not even get into Breath of the Wild, featuring Calamity Ganon, Dark Beast Ganon, and four blights of him too. Ah, that was really bad. Aside from that, I think it's really cool how each of the three timelines shows a different side to the Gerudo King, adding on to his story each time, and that is the reason why the Demon King is able to claim his throne as the number two villain on this list. Now, as I often do, time for some honorable mentions. This time around, the winners are Onyx, Zant, Sia, even though she's not canon, and of course, Girahim. Vati is honestly one of the most lovable Zelda villains, and I make no effort to hide the fact that Vati is one of my favorites. Now, out of all of the baddies in the series, Vati is one of the few who shows up a few times. Actually, Vati shows up three times throughout the franchise, in Minish Cap and the two Four Swords games. While the Four Swords games add a bit of lore to Vati, most of his personality is fleshed out in Minish Cap, where he not only shows up a number of times, but his life and origin story is shown. I think it's funny that what eventually becomes a flying purple eyeball was at some point a Minish, one of the most adorable things in the entire Zelda series. I mean, Vati literally stole his master's magic hat to gain power, and turns his master into the very thing he stole from him. Beyond that stuff though, Vati is a unique villain. I always thought it was interesting to see the parallel between Vati and Ganondorf. The two both lust for power, and obtain so much of it that they get turned into beasts. However, while Ganondorf is able to come back later in the series, by the time Vati is restored in the Four Sword games, he's also lost not only his desires, but even his entire personality. Funny enough, come Breath of the Wild though, Ganon finally reached this point as well. Regardless, Vati is my all-time favorite Zelda villain, and that's why he takes the number one spot on this list. And that just about wraps up this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Remember to leave your own list down below. Seeing different top fives in the comments is one of my favorite parts of these videos. Before I let you go, as I mentioned earlier, I have a whole line of different shirts and hoodies available on my Teespring store so definitely pick one up to show your support for the channel. 
As always, remember to subscribe, tap that like button ever so gently, and make sure to click the bell to be notified when I post a new video. Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Peace out.